Hi folks, so resuming on chapter 15, we look at bankruptcy and we start by acknowledging that the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act is federal law, so the same rules will apply all over Canada in all provinces. And there are two main uh, objectives for the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. The first one is to try to preserve as many of the debtor's assets as possible and for the benefit of as many as creditors uh, possible because some creditors may end up uh, not being paid. And by trying to preserve those assets and benefiting some or all of the creditors, the Act also aims at rehabilitating the debtor uh, by forgiving if any, uh, unpaid debts that remain. Uh, there's this concept of insolvency and bankruptcy and two different concepts and they are very important uh, for you to know. So a person that is insolvent is a person that is unable to pay their debts as they become due. So I have 20,000 due. I had 20,000 due this morning or today and I did not have um, enough assets or enough money to pay. So it means I'm insolvent, but it doesn't mean I'm bankrupt. So that's very important. Insolvent is only when debts become due and you are unable to pay. Bankruptcy on the other end is the process in which a debtor's assets will be transferred to a trustee. So after being solvent, there may be a bankruptcy and the process, the process of bankruptcy. And bankruptcy may happen or may take place in one of the two ways. It may happen in a voluntary way. So I became insolvent and I decide to take the initiative and apply in court uh, for bankruptcy or my creditors or some of my creditors, one of my creditors, uh, may petition to court for my bankruptcy. So this is the involuntary way of uh, being bankrupt. So we'll look at those two processes uh, now in more details. The involuntary uh, bankruptcy process, so is the one that the creditor will petition to the court and then the court will make the order for the bankrupt to transfer uh, the assets to a trustee. And the trustee is a person that is of uh, trust of the court. And the trustee, we've seen more details in a while, but the trustee will then deal with my assets uh, to try to benefit as many creditors as possible. Whereas the voluntary uh, bankruptcy process is actually a voluntary assignment um, of the assets uh, to the trustee. So the voluntary bankruptcy process is when the debtor or I uh, file what is called the assignment for general benefit of creditors. And I also file the statement of affairs. Statement of affairs will be uh, the assets I have at the, and the debts I also have. And then the trustee, the same way as in the involuntary uh, bankruptcy process, will receive the uh, debtor's assets and will administer the state. We call it a state. So all the assets of the uh, debtor or the bankrupt. So the trustee does not own the assets. The trustee is just holding the debtor's assets in trust for the creditors. So the trustee will run, will manage uh, all those assets for the best benefit of the creditors. Uh, so just emphasizing the trustee is the one that will hold the assets in trust, will try to preserve uh, the asset value as much as possible, and then sell the assets and distribute the proceeds fairly to the creditors. And as we saw uh, before, good suppliers, they can re reclaim their goods, only the unpaid ones, within 30 days of sale. So 
the example I gave you, my company purchased 200 laptops to pay in 30 days or 60 days. And then I went bankrupt within this 30 day of sale. So the laptop supplier uh, may be able to reclaim those goods. So they have priority over the sold goods that are unpaid. If it's after 30 days, then they will fall into the list of uh, creditors, uh, priority of creditors. The offenses for bankruptcy. So within one year of the bankruptcy, so one year back, uh, if there were transfer of assets of the debtors, so if the debtor transferred their own assets for just a nominal value, or without any consideration, those uh, settlements, those transfers, they are uh, regarded as illegal, prohibited. So all those transactions will um, will be canceled uh, by the court. And also if the uh, debtor decides to pay creditors, uh, not in the proper preference, so we saw the secured creditors, uh, we saw that under the PPSA, the first to register will have a preference to be paid. So if the debtor uh, circumvents this preference and pays other um, creditors, uh, this will be regarded as a fraudulent uh, preference and they are also prohibited. The, um, the bankrupt, the debtor, uh, may face some uh, criminal charges. And not only that, uh, those transactions may also be declared void. The bankrupt has uh, the duty to disclose all transactions uh, regarding to their assets uh, during the last year and disclose all settlements, <clears throat> settlements sorry, uh, of the last five years. The debtors or bankrupt also has to cooperate with the trustee and then transfer all assets to the uh, trustee. Uh, some of the bankruptcy offenses, they are punishable by, by fine and there may be um, prison for those offenses of up to three years. So once you voluntarily assign uh, your assets in court, the, volunteer, the voluntary uh, bankruptcy process, or you receive an order of bankruptcy, the involuntary bankruptcy process, um, you should uh, comply with your duties or else you may uh, get a fine and may even uh, go to prison for up to three years. This, this is uh, from the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. It is section 136.1 uh, and I'm just showing this to you. You don't need to memorize this, but just so that you learn the preference of payment. So once the trustee starts selling the assets and making money, the trustee will distribute the proceeds respecting or complying with this uh, preference that is in section 136.1 of the Business uh, Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. So first ones to be paid will be the secured creditors and then the second um, that to be paid will be the uh, funeral and testamentary expenses if the bankrupt is deceased and then after this the proceeds will be used for the cost of administration of the bankruptcy and then fourth in preference will be any wages salaries commissions uh, that were not paid and then municipal taxes um, will be assessed and levied uh, against the bankrupt and there's uh, this uh, list of preference goes on, but I'm just sharing with you this, uh, the five uh, first preferred creditors that will be paid. So now you look at this question and it is asking for you to find the uh, false statement about bankruptcy. And I'm just speaking here so I can give you some time to read. But I'll, uh, again, you can pause and I'll give you the right answer. The right answer is D, which is all creditors of bankrupt debtor are treated equally. No, they are not. We just saw there's a priority uh, of uh, claims or payment 
uh, starting with the secured creditors and it goes on so this is um, the false one d so after all assets uh, have been sold and proceeds have been distributed uh, as per uh, the preference for individuals individuals may be discharged from the bankruptcy process so being discharged means that the bankruptcy process is ended because all or most debts has been uh, have been paid and there are no more assets uh, remaining so if there are any debts that were not uh, paid they may be unforgiven but some debts they will survive um, the discharge so debts such as fines maintenance payments family supports even student loans if the assets were not enough to pay those debts those are not forgiven so they will survive the end of the bankruptcy for an individual we say uh, they survive the discharge for companies or corporations they are actually never discharged from a bankruptcy so once a company is declared bankrupt they will never be discharged the company has to be shut down so before uh, going through a bankruptcy process companies try to use what is called the division one proposal under the act the bankruptcy and insolvency act so that they can try to avoid bankruptcy and this division one proposal is the one that the company presents to court uh, all their assets all their uh, business dealings and also all their debts and they make a proposal so they should pay they are insolvent or quasi insolvent uh, so they make a proposal to pay their debts in the coming six months one year two three years and if the creditors and the judge uh, accept so they avoid bankruptcy uh, and the last thing about bankruptcy is that for corporations uh, there may be some personal liability for directors uh, mainly in cases directors uh, committed fraud so I believe I've given you this example already but I'll just repeat let's say a director of a company got a loan and then used the loan uh, for personal purposes not the company so this is regarded as a fraudulent uh, activity uh, using a company so in this case the director could be personally uh, liable for the bankruptcy or for the debts so that's it for bankruptcy and please let me know if you have any questions or doubts thank you bye